So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Um, I wanted to make my own gesso because I made it on the 7th of the 7th, 14. And I had intended to, but at that time I wanted to, I think it's this book. I was messing about with this book and these were just wallpaper pages um, and I think I've done a couple of them and what they sound like they're sticking together but they're not and there's a bit of a sheen on them and I wanted to make them a little bit kind of tougher. So, um, because we were there for a couple of weeks, I went to a hardware shop. And Filey has a couple of hardware shops, but the one I went to, it was eleven ninety five for a tube of glue that wasn't this size, and it was eleven ninety five when you can buy it in the pound shop for a pound. So I thought, drat. So I ended up Googling how to make white glue from flour and water in a saucepan and adding a touch of salt and a touch of vinegar. And the house at the seaside obviously had salt and vinegar there because opposite the fish and chip shop and that's what you get at the seaside in the UK and so I made my own white uh, and at the same time I went to the pound shop because they have a pound shop and they didn't have any glue I think the kids have obviously um, glued them out Tig. so I got some baby powder and because I'd seen about the gesso um, and it was a, a very, very young girl, probably 10, um, had made a video. And in those days, um, I mean, it's only good about three years, three or four years, there weren't many videos about gesso. So I watched the ladies do it, and then I watched this girl do it. And she put a pinch of sugar and a pinch of vinegar. Now, I, I, all I remember is a mixing with a really little plastic spoon. And I've just spent all night looking for that video and I can't find it. And I'm sure she mixed the sugar with one and she mixed the vinegar with the water. And you mix the two liquids together. Now, I haven't seen everybody recently do that. They all chuck it in the same thing and swiddle it together. But because of the vinegar, and it was only a tablespoon of vinegar and a pinch of salt, a pinch of sugar. If you can see in here, it's dried it's not gone off in all those years and it didn't go off um, and I put a little bit in here that I took around with me to use at the model shows so I could do some crafting in the model shows <coughs> excuse me and so I found this tub and it's not PVA. I'm pretty sure it's not PVA because PVA smells. Now this is watered down that I did for my daughter and the problem I have, I was going to make some fresh but the problem I have is avalanche. I can't mix and I can't get tops off. So if I find that video I will I can't get the top off. See, I can't get the tops off. My husband's gone to work now. So I have just covered this page because what I want to do is I have two Harry Potter colouring books and all the colouring books I'm doing differently but I want to do this with acrylics and oils, water-based oils. But I've got to gesso it first. So rather than have a go straight away, um, and I do have the uh, gesso from um, the pa um, 
the works from the UK. I've got Mod Podge. I've got um, Multimap Medium. Uh, but it's a tight Yorkshire lath. I can't really use those for non-special things. Now, obviously, if you're doing something... Oh, just, I've just missed a bit. If you're doing something... Um, For a commission then you've got to use the proper stuff obviously but for your home use and i'm pretty sure that this is my homemade glue don't think it's gesso but it's put a nice coating on it so i'm going to leave that i was going to use that actually but i'm going to leave it because that might do because it hasn't done much to the page i can see through it but it's given it a little bit of stability now i make my gesso with baby powder and although they've said it's not good to inhale. We've been using it on babies' bottoms for almost a hundred years. We don't make them inhale it, but we tap it on their bottoms. So, um, and I used it again. I had some because the children went to the seaside, and there is nothing better and quicker than getting sand between toes off than this. If you sprinkle this onto toes and rub, the sand just falls away, and the children's feet are dry. Um, and that is the best. So I'm going to put this to dry. Oh, it's going to be wet now. <laughs> um, put that to dry somewhere. And I must get some more of these. These are from the pound shop, um, and they are the cooking, the cooking mats. Um, but what I need to do with them <clears throat> is to so glue two together. These two are stuck together. So I need to stick two together and then I've got a huge one because a tight Yorkshire lass cannot bear to spend a fortune on the craft mats when it's the same kind of stuff. Different pound shops have different ones, some are slightly better. This is a nice one and it's a lovely size, so I'll probably get two of these. Um, these may have been from a supermarket, but again, it's a, it's a nice a nice good size so I've tried this one um, I think this is just glue looking at that um, it's what we used at college and again perfectly okay perfectly okay for college um, it was thick at the bottom because I haven't used it for a couple of years so I'm pretty sure that that's glue So what I'm going to do in here, and I was going to do, if I could get the top off, is because this is watered down, uh, I'd, I'd written on it watery because I'd, I think the girls were doing a project or something. Um, but if I can't get the top off, the thing is I won't be able to. Oh, hi, welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm just playing about with making my own gesso. And the last time I did it was in 2014. In fact, to tell a lie, it wasn't the last time. I wrote it on a pot somewhere. I've done some, I've, done, I've made two lots, but I made some glue when I was away. So um, I'd watered this down and I was hoping, I thought, oh, I might as well use that, but I can't seem to get the top of it. I suppose. What I could do is, if I can find the scalpel blade, um, where did I put the scalpel never anything about when you want to. I can't believe I can't get this this top off. And that's how my husband's gone to work today. <laughs> Murphy's Law says This is what I call the Ustream Gremlin because the minute you want to try and do anything, 
go wrong. If I could this. cut this off, I'm not quite sure I can do this without without stabbing myself live. <laughs> Just to move a bit. Oh, sorry about that. Can't use that one. Oh, morning, uh, morning, Sandy. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm having a bit of a play with uh, the. This is a quite a good one. Um, the wood glues are quite good. Uh, cheaper ones are decorators ones. I'm going to keep the wood glue one because it's. Uh, I'll use the wood because it's cheaper. A bit tight Yorkshire glass. I was trying to use up um, the different glues. I do have mod podge and all sorts of other things which I'm going to have to start to use actually. Um, I should have to start to use. I think this one's going to be too rough because I'm going to be working with some quite fine paintbrushes. And um, I think this is going to be too rough. Let's have a bit of a. quite soft is that it's quite soft is that I could use that I suppose I could use that but I want to show how I make mine but I can't get the lids off um, but this is how I, what I do with my gesso is I put the glue in and as I said I can't remember what this young lady did I'm sure she had the glue with the water and put a tablespoon of vinegar in it and then she had a pot with the uh, baby powder and she put the sugar in but you dissolve it no you dissolve the sugar in the water first and then you put the water into the glue make sure that's completely mixed up and the vinegar in there as well everything's liquid and then you put the baby powder in and the baby powder i found was very very soft so it didn't leave a tooth because i didn't want a tooth i want this to be very very fine all I want to do is to coat the pages. So I've done one, um, and I'm pretty sure, it's nearly dry actually, I'm pretty sure that this is my homemade, didn't label it, I'm pretty sure, that, and it was quite thick at the bottom, it's taken me 10 minutes to stir it. Quite sure this is my homemade, just glue. And as I say, we used to use that at college, and what it's done is it's just made that a little bit tougher, but done absolutely nothing to the page whatsoever that's the difference um, but I'm not sure that will take oil so what I want to do is to make some gesso um, and I can't get the, this will be perfect but I can't get the lid off let's see if I can get the lid off this one I can get the lid off this one um, I'm supposed to measure, but I can't remember about measuring, so we'll just... Oops, actually that's because it's sat a while. Um, I have to put my finger over it a bit. So I'm just going to pour all that in here. And that's neat, it's not been watered down at all. That's Wilco's PVA wood glue, and that's pretty good stuff. The beauty of doing your own, oh. making your own glue uh, <clears throat> with flour and water, and again you put a little bit of vinegar in it, which is why that hasn't gone off in years, it's not been kept in the fridge, is um, children can eat it if they're toddlers, and it's only flour and water. Uh, but it still does quite well. But there was a, there was a lady that was a, school, a Sunday school teacher that I watched, and again she's kind of gone off the off the grid. So um, I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. So what I want to do is to 
to get some water in here. I'm just looking for a little pot that I can use to scoop water. That's the lid. So I'll use my little thing that I've brought. So I'm just going to put some water in here. Um, and because this isn't, you know, I wouldn't use this if I was doing a commission or anything. You'd have to do proper things, but... And I was thinking about putting it back in here, but I can't because the lid's been cut off. So that would be a no-no. And that's the consistency there that we would use at college to cover. Oops, I need to get rid of that because I'm not. And to put that just somewhere safe. And it's the wrong place to do messy things, but there we go. So in here now. That's probably a little bit thick. Oops, I've got some out. I should have cleaned the dish out first. I thought I'd cleaned it out first, but I haven't. That's not good. Give it a bit of a stir. Um, I think that one will do. It depends on the glue. All glues do. When I did, uh, I made some butterflies. I made hundreds of butterflies from a book with origami butterflies and it was for the local library um, and the whole window was full of books and, and the books opened and all these butterflies were flying out of these books um, and that was a piece for my my degree and um, I just used glue and water which is probably what this runny mix was um, I wish I could use that up but never mind um, I'm only going to guess at this I'm going just I haven't got any vinegar and I haven't got any sugar near me so I would stir a little bit of vinegar in here purely because I think that's what's going to cause it. I would like to get this lid off but I don't think I can. And this is what causes the dust so you've got to be a little bit careful with this. But I would prefer to use baby powder than chalk or anything else you can get from the internet. And plaster of Paris because I've got asthma so I'd much prefer to use this got a bit of a dust going on there when I used it in the book uh, as I say I made it with this junk book I made here <clears throat> Um, the, oops, I don't think I've covered the top. This isn't covered with it. <coughs> yes, I can test that. I made this and it's how uh, Jenny Belly on uni um, YouTube. And she makes it from a, a conflict box, so that's the size of it. If I just move my camera up a little bit. And I hope I'm in, I hope I'm in uh, focus because I haven't got automatic focus on because it jumps about. And you can hear the pages sticking a little bit. Some of them I didn't do. Uh, some of them I did do. Um, these are, and these are cheap acrylics, these, so of course they don't stick. Um, some pages I didn't do, but some I did. And again, it's this recurring. This is my doodle book. Um, you see, they sound like they're sticking together. Oops, and they do stick, <laughs> but they don't stick together. Sorry about that. Um, and so they do sound like they are sticking together. But this has been squashed in a... And it gives the pages a, a different texture, which is quite nice. Now, this is probably one I've done. Or maybe just white acrylic on there. I think these pages I've got um, this on because it's the same, it's not white, 
so I made clear gesso and I said I did it when I was away um, and it, just putting silly backgrounds in um, yes if you can see this looks like it's gesso clear gesso and it hasn't gone moldy but it's because I put the vinegar in it uh, and if you put vinegar in it um, it kind of looks after it so I love the junk book so I wasn't about to spend £12 on a bottle of um, of glue which is what they wanted at filing and it's a tight Yorkshire lash so I googled how to make uh, white PVA glue and it was as if in Sunday school so the kids could eat it and it was just flour water with a drop of vinegar in it and then I watched um, the talcum powder so we'll carry on stirring because I'm not sure what happens if you don't stop stirring and um, I was watching them do this thinking I'm not gonna be able to do this tomorrow <laughs> and I've got lumps in it you can you can um, you can make it with plaster of Paris I've actually bought some plaster of Paris to do it with but and I will put a drop of vinegar in here a table a teaspoon of vinegar as a preservative um, and if I can warm the vinegar up I'll put a teaspoon of sugar into the vinegar and so it's completely dissolved and then I'll stir it in and that's the preservative because if it works for jams and chutneys it should work for glue and gesso oh hi Marielle welcome to Bunny's Designs Lynn I'm making um, well I was going to make my own glue but um, the stirring and the mixing turned out to be a bit of a disaster for me because I want to cover I want to cover these oops sorry oopsie Harry Potter books I'm going to use uh, water-based oils and acrylics in here because I think they lend themselves to some really nice fine detail um, so I've got a few pages out of this book um, to practice to see what they look like so the first one I know is definitely uh, homemade glue but I don't think it was gesso um, and I love the fact that because I'd put a little bit of vinegar and sugar in it You've just got to make sure it's all dil diluted before you put your baby powder in. And as I say, I'd much rather play with baby powder that we used to put on bottoms for a hundred years than I would plaster of Paris, because plaster of Paris is nasty stuff. And so is chalk and uh, lots of other things. I mean, this isn't brilliant, but if it's I say, good enough for baby's bottoms, it's good enough to go in here. And I'm only doing it once ever so often if you make a big batch. I quite like that consistency um, and a bit of a naughty girl normally I pinch these from the kitchen because I bought two by mistake because I do that <laughs> and um, so I've, I've taken these but it's, it's just a bit difficult for me to hold but I've managed to do it now that's clear gesso that is now clear gesso and I did pull a few pages off here to, to have a go. So I'm just going to show you what clear is. Sorry, Marie, I do apologise. Oh, sorry, yes, I, I can see now. I can see that. I do apologise. It's because I was squinting and it was not in caps. I do ap apologise. Um, so I've got my little brush here. And I just want sprinting out a bit. But if you do put that little bit of vinegar, and I said when I watched this young girl, and she says she was young, she would have been a, not ten, I think, which was a big thing in the in five, four or five years ago. Well, um, summer of fourteen, and I think it was. I've got some from the six of the six I think as well so I've made it twice probably made one one at filing one at home I'm going to put this that way I think actually and I keep these in that big book so that I know what it's about but I haven't even been in the book for a good year now so but it did its purpose um so I'm just going to take a little bit of this and hopefully the baby powder uh, now, I've seen people actually put it on with a, with a credit card, so I have hundreds now, I can't find any. Mm. Nope, 
can't find any, so it's going to have to go on with this. So you know, the palette knife. Palette knife is going to give a nice flat edge. Um, it might not even be thick enough. I'm going to have a go, and then I know which one that's going to use. It's going to be better, and we'll put one with acrylics. And these are proper acrylics. These aren't the um, the Americano and the ones from the what are the other ones called. Um, I don't know what they're called. They're from um, boys have them for a pound, one pound twenty, I think. Um, craft paint, the craft acrylics, because they're thinner. This is going on really nice, actually. So I might have got a good mix here, even though I didn't follow a recipe which is rather naughty but it's like everything I like to have a go I haven't oil painted for um, a few years so I need to have a bit of a practice and I can just see a bit of a sheen on there so it's a really nice thin cover so I would probably do this with a credit card. It's not got to be perfect, this one. And it started to dry already. And I think the thing with baby powder is, you know it's going to go into a very fine powder. So it's not going to be gritty. Now, if you want a good tooth for pastels, then you don't want this. Um, so if you've got any questions, pop them in caps, because I, I can't see the little, um, the ordinary type. I can only see, because I don't have my glasses on. So I'm as blind as a bat. But if I see caps, I can look and squint. <laughs> try to read and I do apologize I'm a little bit dyslexic so words that are joined together even at my age <laughs> I did have a dyslexic test and they said I was quite intelligent <laughs> but very very dyslexic but I'm only clever because I'm old and I've learned a different way so I'm quite like that I quite like the fact I just need it to be that little bit stiffer to be able to handle I'm going to get rid of that one. Put it on there. That shouldn't take long with these lights to dry. Has anybody got any questions? Well, it isn't grainy though. It's gone on absolutely beautiful. If you look at that, it, there isn't, it's not grainy. That's why I use baby powder. There's no grain on there at all. That's as soft as paper to dry that. That's just as soft as it was before. Um, I've seen a gentleman with a with a, a whizzer on the end, like they mix uh, professional um, decorators make paint. But you don't need to. That's why I use baby powder. If you used something else, it might be a bit grainy, but that's as soft as the paper it was when I did it. It would have been better if I'd got a credit card, and I've got hundreds, but obviously... Um, I'm having a bit of a tidy so that somebody can help me move the stuff, but it's drying. And if you can see where it's dried, I mean, you can see where I've missed there, and it's the same softness. It's the same softness. And um, I've also got another problem, I can't find another. She say I'm young. <laughs> I'm young. I suppose I am. I, we had a, because I was at uni. I had a test for dyslexia, and of course, in the sixties and seventies, you never got tested for anything. You were just put in the corner with the crayons. Um, and I had to go to work and and struggle with jobs, and which I did. And I actually got. I actually got to where my husband is now, so I got quite high up. Um, as high as I wanted to be. I got paid more than management, so that was good. 
they got paid annually I got paid by the hour so I was quite happy with that and then I decided when I had to give up that I would do art for therapy and ended up at university and um, I thought that was rather strange for me even though I'd been to college when I was younger and they test you and it's an all-day test <laughs> it's an all-day test um, and at the end of it, she said, you're severely dyslexic, but you're very, very intelligent. I said, okay. And she said, because I'm older, um, I was 50 when I did the test. Because I was older, obviously I'd had to learn a different way. And that's what I've had to do. But I can't read out loud and I can't read names. So Marie... Um, did Marie say? Good morning, Carol. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is a live stream and I've been mixing this morning. So I've taken some Wilco's PV glue and it's two or three pounds, it's not very expensive. And that's the wood glue. And I think the wood glue, it's solvent free, is a little bit stronger. Um, I prefer to make my own, but never mind, I've used that one. And then I've just put some baby powder in, and I was very naughty. I didn't mix it. I didn't. Um, I didn't sieve it. Um, so it's. It, it, there's no lumps in it. It's gone beautiful. Absolutely smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> but I prefer baby powder because I know people make it with all sorts of others. But I've got asthma and plaster of Paris and chalk and all these other chemicals. Not an option. If it's good enough for a baby's bottom, it's good enough for me. Wouldn't be making tons of it every day, but it's fine. Now this is almost dry. So this is clear gesso. Now if you want, you do exactly the same. And you pour um, probably a cup full, half half amount of there, of um, white acrylic. And if you don't want to use cheap acrylic, you can use um, the white emulsion. But it's the... Um, acrylic emulsion not gloss it's the acrylic emulsion and if you put white in there you'll have a beautiful white gesso if you put about a cup full about half the liquid of black cheap gesso um acrylic paint you will get black gesso if you want pink put pink in whatever color you want put into there but that's your basic mix as i say it does need um I'm going to get a tablespoon, a, a teaspoon of vinegar, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of sugar, and I shall try of warm, boil, cooled water. And everybody said to use distilled water because it doesn't go off then. So that should last. It won't go off because it's got the vinegar and the sugar in it. Yes, I did add water. Um, Did I add water? But I didn't add much. I just kind of put three or four of these tops in. If you look online, there's lots of recipes now. When I did it, there wasn't. Um, I can't remember. I've, I've got it in my my little um, file of facts. I'll look it up in my Midori that I made. Uh, the recipe. Um, but there's so many online now. That I didn't really want to do this, but I couldn't find mine. So that's almost dry and it's really, really soft. So probably I could use another one on there, another coat. Um, I'm thinking I might want it a little bit thicker. But if you look online, there's the proper recipe with all the... With all the thing, but I don't think you can go very much. I don't know to put some more in there. I might just give it a bit more oomph. So we'll. I can't get the lid off, so I'm having to do this. Because I've put the vinegar in, no, I wouldn't. Um, Sandy says, would I store it in the fridge? You can do. Um, and they say about the. But when I made my own glue. When I made my own glue, I 
as I said, there was this young girl that that made the, this gesso, and she put, um, she mixed the sugar into into wa warm water with a little bit of vinegar. Um, but she mixed the sugar with water for one, and then the vinegar in the water for the glue. And um, Asthma, and I don't take my asthma things anymore. So now this is extremely thick. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> the thing is, if I do this, I won't be able to paint, but never mind. Persevere. And I should have washed the pot out, but I wanted to show the pot was not mouldy um, after 7, 7, 14. That little bit of vinegar and sugar is a preservative, so it doesn't go off. But I suppose if you want to store it in your fridge, you could do. But the beauty of making PVA glue from flour is you know your children can eat it and it's not going to do any harm. If I had grandchildren. Oh, hi, Chrissy. Hi Chrissy, hi Carol. Um, I did add water to it. Um, so this, and it's going to be maybe a little bit lumpy as this. I'll have to get my daughter to kind of do it. But again, that's the beauty of baby powder. So that was a little bit drier. So that's the horse. So. It's almost dry, but that is beautiful and smooth. And I work very fine, so I like a smooth surface. So I'm just going to leave that dry a little bit more. Um, I might just write on the top here. Um, thin gesso. Oops. Thin gesso. And I want that to dry flat. This one is has a bit of a tooth to it actually. That's not as smooth, and this is one that I've made probably a few years ago. And I think this is my homemade glue because it has no smell of PVA at all. Uh, and it was quite thick this morning. And I stirred it up. So I think this is my PVA glue that I've put water to. And again, used as Mod Podge. So this is a little bit... You can feel that a little bit more. But I did put it on with a brush. But again, I think that's going to be enough. I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough. And then I'll just do one more. And then we've tested a thicker gesso. And again, no acrylic paint in there, it's just gesso. It's just baby powder, a little bit of water and glue. So I will be putting, and that's really thick, is that? I will be putting um, I found this scraper that might do. Um, I will be putting, as I say, a little bit of sugar uh, dissolved in vinegar to preserve it. Um, I probably won't use all that at once. So, try the brush out. I was very naughty. I didn't measure anything. <laughs> I didn't measure anything. And I did bring a, a, a good big brush. This is a lovely brush. It's got a springy hand, so I can actually hold it. Um, but any any decorator's brush. If you're doing a big canvas, definitely use one of those. Don't fiddle about with a paintbrush, for goodness sake. Because you want a nice smooth finish. Even for this size, you can use a big one. Because you're going to get a nice smooth edge. But I'm just going to try it with... Because I did it with the brush, so I'm now going to try it with um, the palette and see if I can get a decent edge on it. Thank you. 
again this is very smooth and I might just put a thicker coat on this one I think put, it's quite nice and thick is this so I think I'm going to try and get a nice thick coat on here is just to practice so that I can use this in my Harry Potter book. Oh, sorry about the noise, that's horrible. I apologise in advance for that. Credit card would be better. I'm scraping up all these other bits from the um, the mat. But it's it's quite a nice quite a nice coating, is that? And it is thicker because the lines are now um, a little bit. quite quickly so you forget where you've been but there we go and I can get those bits off in a bit it's a shame to get some bits on it but it's just a practice this I will be using a clean one of these so it's a practice put that one to dry I think that's going to be the best one it's thicker gesso it's clear so this now it's, it's quite a nice consistency, it's probably what you'd buy this. The other is quite good for a, a Mod Podge, this is more of a gesso and all you've done is added probably two cups of um, powder but there are a lot, an, an awful lot of people making their own now so it's so different than when I did it a few years ago. And this feels really soft, really soft. Probably softer than the one behind. Um, I'm wondering if I should do the other side as well, actually, but I don't think I need to. You can definitely feel there's a lovely soft coating on there. Really nice. Quite quite like that one. So I'll put that there because this one's wetter. Let me see if the other one's dried. This is, um, and you can see straight away. This is what I would think as I've made Mod Podge. I've made my own glue and I put water to it. And again, that's a really nice soft. But um, if we put that to one side to dry, by the time we've mixed some paints, they'll be dry. So um, I'll have a look in the acrylic box and see what we've got. Trying to clean up as I go along, otherwise I'll end up with a bit of a mess. So that's quite nice. I'll pop the glue's out of there, but I'm just going to leave that sitting in there gently. I'll put the lid on here. change that date um, to the 24th of the 10th uh, 2016 so I now I can remember when, <laughs> when I made it so if you've got any questions pop them in caps but there are an awful lot of measured either weighed measured or cup measured recipes online but I do like a drop of vinegar in there because that's the preservative otherwise you'd have to keep it in the fridge and use it within two or three weeks 
so of course if you're going to make a big batch I'm putting the colour page on because I want to use professional oils and professional acrylics in my Harry Potter colour book and I don't really think I can do that without giving it a bit of a protection first because I use a lot of different water mediums in a lot of different books but because the Harry Potter ones are so uh, so nice and of course I'm a bit of a Potter fan I wanted to really make um, Ollivanders and the book when I've changed my desk around I'll show you my thing with my books um, so I want to do these pages as, as as professional paintings and the way to do that is to give them a coat of gesso but I wanted to make my own gesso because I went in to buy this little pot and it was a little bit bigger than this one it was a little bit bigger granted and it was ten pounds that was half price in Cass Art and I was talking to the lady and I said you know have you tried this um, Liquitex I think it was and she said she said I did because I said well I want a professional one she said I wouldn't she said I said I make my own she said I'll make your own she said because it ruins her it ruins your brushes if you have a, a, a gesso with a good tooth use really crappy brushes because it wrecks your brushes um, because my 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 watercolor brushes that I've been using for a few pages are already showing their kind of wear because they've been rubbing on a page so the, the ends have gone a little bit funny they go fuzzy so you will wreck your water your, your paint brushes so again something like this I really wanted to give this a proper a proper painting as I call it which I haven't done for a while so I will be coating these which with whichever gesso works and then I will be painting them because I paint one of my things is painting books and um, if I can find it I can't find my original one and um, to get into uni I had a 10 a 5 foot by 5 foot um, oil painting but it was water based oils and it was uh, bookshelves with um, it was technically my daughter in a Victorian dress but And let me see if I can find this one. So this is the kind of detail. And I paint with a dog hair. That's how fine I paint. When I paint, I haven't painted for about four years now since I went to uni. Um, if I can find my little book. These are a pile of Victorian books that I painted about four years ago. Um, bear with me two seconds. I will find it. I'm going to have to take these um, Destination Star Trek photos off the phone because there's <laughs> hundreds of them. There's quite a few because I was a little bit of an excited girl when I was there. And I think I got 100 pictures of William Shantness. <laughs> I was a bit obsessed. Um, I will find my book in two seconds. Anybody got any questions? Oh, it might not work. It's an experiment. I, I hasten to add, it may not work. But um, I think this is going to lead me back into professional painting again. I don't know if it's going to flash out, is it? These are my books. And the Victorian books were made of material. And because they kind of warp off so these are painted with a dog hair and it was purely by accident it was purely by accident um, in fact I did the same thing yesterday the dog um, was under my slipper and as I stood up he stood up 
to get out of my way because they know I, I stumble a bit. But because my 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 slipper was on the corner of his tail, technically I wasn't touching his tail, but I actually was standing on the hairs of the end of his tail. So he stood up and disappeared and pulled the hairs out of his tail because I was standing on it. Um, so I want to get back to, to being able to, to paint again. I had a bad experience with a couple of tutors and uh, I've I haven't painted since, so I need to play. Hence the Jenny Belly book. Um, that was my my art. I thought I could never paint again, but hey ho. So I think all these are going to be fab. Uh, and the the beautiful thing about acrylics and oils is that you can go from light to dark to dark to light, and you can correct your mistakes. You can't do that with watercolor. So. Once the watercolours are down, they're kind of down. So I just thought these, and there's one of Ollivander's, I'm sure there is. I just wanted this to be a proper painting. Now, if I had an A3 printer, I would blow them up to A3 and do them, but these are A4. Um, but again, I just think that's going to be a, a fab painting. So in theory, the, the clear gesso is going to leave all the detail for me to paint and it's going to um, give the page some guts to hold watercolour oils. And you, watercolour oils are fab if you've got asthma or you don't like the smell of terps in the house. I've got these when the children were babies, so I've had these a long time, some of them. Uh, this is one of my mum's oil paintings from the 60s, and it's squishy. It's still squishy. So they last, if you have them in a tin, um, which the others are in a tin. So these are oils, and these are artisan mixable oils. And again, they come in a fab, fab set. Because you have your two reds, you have your two yellows. And you have your two blues but you've got yellow ochre which is a must for skin tones it isn't a must you get red india and that's the one that i bought um so you can always tell a good selection of paints i think they're about 20 20 pounds 17 pounds um you get a raw umber and i think you get a, a sienna as well i've got because I used these for my degree, which didn't go down very well, I can tell you. They left me out of the room twice. Um, but you get a nice selection of these. And they are still fairly squidgy, so I'm going to use the original ones. You can tell the original ones because they're... But... So this is obviously a new set. Uh, so I do want a cad yellow. It's a raw sienna and a burnt umber. And if, because I've got this, I'm going to use it. There's a cad yellow. Naples yellow, because I'm obsessed with Naples yellow. There's a red Indian. In fact, I've got two red Indians. So. <laughs> Sorry, yes, red Indian. Uh, Indian red, so I do apologise. I've got me losing crimson there. There's a permanent rose and there's a cad red. So um, there should be a black and white, a cerulean blue, French phthalo blue, French ultramarine. So it seems I actually got these colours. Uh, raw umber, raw sienna. A pop, a cadmium. There's a red. I may as well use them if I've got them out. So. I'll have a play with those and you can use water but I work very very dry so because I work very dry I bought some of this because if you they are already mixed with a pigment that allows you to mix them with water but if you use it very thin almost like um, single cream probably thinner than that to get to work really fine with the dog hair 
you take it to an extra level and when you water this down too much you are separating the water binder with the oil and the paints will split and they'll look and they'll go grainy on you on your on your work so if you can i know i'm normally a tight yorkshire last and this was 575 but i will be working quite detailed in this book so that's why and since they i've got all these colors i will be using them so we've got um, three blues uh, we've got four reds we've got two we've got five yellows uh, two browns and an orange so we've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen we've got fifteen now and normally i wouldn't work with those but as i say because they're out i'm going to use them uh, and i'm going to use them in a stay wet palette it's nice and dry now and that's really smooth And you can sit it back in your book if you want it to be dry. Um, so I could get rid of all these things and get a palette out. How am I doing for time? Can everybody see everything? And I will zoom in. Um, so I might, I'm going to save this video and um, and then we'll start with these, if that's okay with everybody.